Hello everybody, Captain Fructose here, and welcome to Stormworks. So I have actually created a vehicle that I have uploaded to the Steam Workshop, and today I wanted to show it to you guys, and this is it. This is called um, the Fructose Industries ARV, or Amphibious Rescue Vehicle. Uh, it is a tracked tank looking armored personnel carrier thingy. Yeah, that's the th basic idea of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, the cool features. Uh, as you can see, it does have suspension under here. Usually tracked stuff doesn't have suspension. This does, and I have been able to get it to work now, so it doesn't bounce too much. Thank goodness. This turret, I will show you once we get inside because that's where the controls for it are. So I'll show you that when we get inside. So we'll look on the, the sides and stuff first. So there's not much detail on the sides as of yet, but there will be eventually. You can refuel it. I have a fuel connector here and of course a sign to show you where that is. You can see the radiator for the engine on this side. It does have two engines, two large diesel engines to run this thing to make sure it has enough power. So coming around to the back side, you can see the reverse lights are on. And, of course, the backup reverse light, like the backup, uh, what do you call it, the spotlight, floodlight thing to help you see. And, of course, you know, your brake lights and everything. It does have propellers on it because it's amphibious, so it does need to be able to go through the water. So it's got one propeller at each side. It's actually connected to the same drive line as the uh, treads are. So these run with the treads, but only if you push the button to turn on the propellers. And then, of course, you know, we've got the rudders on either side so that you can steer it in the water. So, and then, of course, I've got a little bit of detail back here as well. Nothing on the sides yet. This side looks the same. A little bit of detail. Needs more. Haven't quite got around to that part yet. I've been building the interior and the rest of it. So let's go ahead and hop in the interior here. Go ahead and close the door. So as you can see, these are actually lockers where there are tools stored. So if you push this button, oh wait, what the freak? Okay, apparently that one uh, needs work. So uh, they slide out. <laughs> That's what they're supposed to do is slide out. And of course we got our strobe light, equipment. You go on the other side, there's more stuff on this side as well. So you can open it from either side. And there is four of them in total and they are all double-sided. So there is tons of equipment in these. But then they just kind of slide out of the way so you can get through the hallway as needed if you need to get in or out of the vehicle. So coming down the hallway a little farther, we have our engine access hatches so you can see in the engine bay uh, in case you need to do any maintenance or anything like that. And I've got, you know, my, uh, what do you call it, the thing that shows you all of the different, like, stuff turned on so you can see all the information about the engine. But there's one for either engine on either side. You can see all the fluid and other pipes in there. And then, of course, there are four crew quarters. You can turn on the lights. Uh, you can also lock the door. So if you come in here and do that, push this, it will lock the door for, you know, privacy reasons. But each room has a bed. Haven't quite made it to the rooms yet as far as detailing them and making them look better. So right now they're pretty basic, but it's getting there. It is at least functional. Like... Basically, everything is functional at this point, so there's that, but all the rooms are basically identical. There is four of them total, and then we come into here. This is, you know, our medical bay, so when you're rescuing people, there's beds to put them in in case they need them. You can see the fluid ports, so you can pump water out in case it floods, and then we've got all of our lights, so we'll turn on the hallway lights, the med bay lights, and then, of course, our nice floor lights down here light up to help you see and there is actually more drawers as you can see here buttons so we can open up each of these drawers these ones are not double-sided like the other ones are only single-sided but i mean there's still a lot of equipment in these then of course drawer one since this is the med bay has all of the medical equipment that we're we will hopefully need you know hopefully we don't need more than that i mean there is more medical equipment in these lockers back here but you know, it's always good to have some right on hand, so we'll go ahead and close those up. Then in here is just kind of like an extra storage room, uh, slash maintenance access for like the batteries and the turret and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and close that up. 
So now I will show you the, actually, before I start that up, let's uh, start the engines and everything so we have plenty of power. So we'll go ahead and turn the key button to turn the power on for all of our systems. And then we'll just start the engines. They do have their own engine management system. So all you have to do is push that. They will keep themselves running. If they get shut off for some reason, they will automatically turn themselves back on. And when you're not driving, they will just idle. So they're not super loud in the background, but they'll still generate electricity. And of course you got your speed, electrical, and your fuel levels and everything. Turn the headlights on and off. And then of course the propellers on and off and then your water drain pumps. And over here you have your engine temperatures and these will tell you if your radiator fans are on. Right now I have them set so they don't actually turn on until the engines reach about 80-ish degrees. So once they hit 80 degrees, the radiator fans will turn on to help keep them from overheating. And this is the top of it. Our lovely turret, 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 however, however you say that. I think I said that wrong. But our turret has a camera, spotlight, and a laser distance sensor on it. And you can, of course, change uh, which way they're facing. So if we come down here, we have our turret controls. So we'll turn on the power to the turret turn on our displays, and turn on our laser rangefinder. And as you can see, when I turn that on, we've got this nice little laser dot. So this actually shows you where on the map you're pointing at. So we can actually zoom the camera in too. As you can see up here, it zooms in on the dot. And then if we turn the spotlight on, you know, lights up the area. And then we've got our up and down controls. So wherever that laser is pointing on the map, it will show it here from where you are here in the center to where it's pointing, which is that red dot. And then of course you can go back and forth and no matter what way you're pointing, it will show you that and of course tell you the distance to that point. So if you're looking for somebody and then you found them, you can pinpoint them with the laser and it will tell you how far away they are and where on the map, it'll show you on the map where exactly they are. Uh, but if you need to see farther or you need to see over something, you can actually raise and lower the turret. So if we do this, we'll just set it to one, come up here, and as you can see, the turret will actually raise up so you can get a better vantage point if you need the better vantage point. So I, I thought that was a nice feature. Uh, if you do go in here, I don't know if you noticed the windows earlier, you may have, but that's what the windows are for. So you can kind of just run in here if you know, you're playing multiplayer and somebody else is down here running the turret and other stuff, they can actually run in here and see if the turret's all the way up or not. Uh, eventually I will put a display on the screen with information on the turret to tell you like its direction it's facing, if it's up all the way and stuff like that. So we can go ahead and put the turret back down here. So you just lower that down and the turret will lower itself back down into the hull like so, so you're not too top heavy, but we'll go ahead and shut these off because no point in having them on using power while we're driving around. Although I would recommend you leave the turret power on because, well, I'll just show you. The turret has a bad tendency to bounce if it doesn't have power. So we'll hop in here and get going. So it's top speed as of right now is about almost 30-ish, around 30 give or take, it goes about 20 when you're on the water. So, but I wanted to show you what happens to the turret if you leave the power off and go over some rough terrain or some big waves. This is what it does. It just kind of bounces up and down. So I would recommend leaving the power on unless you don't mind that your turret is bouncing because um, it drives me nuts when it bounces. So I usually leave the power on to it. So maybe I'll make that automatic in the future. I don't know. Sometimes it is nice to be able to turn the power off to it though to save power if you need to. So maybe I won't change that. I don't know. I'll wait. I'll wait for some feedback on that from you guys. But um, yeah. So next I'm going to show you. Oh wait. I'm in the middle of freaking. Oh there's water over there. Okay. So next I will show you the amphibious mode. So let me go ahead and get this thing turned. Uh, as I'm doing that, you can actually see it's really easy to drive because you just use the WASD keys. Um, the engine throttle and everything is self-managed, as well as the tank drive. 
So you literally just use the WASD keys to uh, to steer it and drive it. You don't have to worry about the clutches. You don't have to worry about killing the engines or anything like that. It manages it all for you, so you can just drive it around, focus on driving, and uh, you know finding the people that you're looking for if they're stranded. So that's that's one thing I definitely wanted in this because I've built tracked vehicles before and they were kind of difficult to keep from killing the engines. So, I took care of that this time, so you don't have to worry about it. Alright, so now we are in the water, so we need to turn on our propellers. And now that those are activated, we just use the W, A, S, and D keys again, and off you go. And technically, you can leave the propellers on all the time if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Like, it won't really change much, unless you're in the water, obviously. But, yep, so your top speed is about 21. Um, I think it's kilometers an hour in the game, but yeah, so it's about 21 on water and about 30 on land, uh, depending on, you know, where you're driving and stuff, but it, it works pretty well. It's still a work in progress, so I will be adding features and different things uh, depending on what feedback I get on it, so if you guys like it, uh, it's on the Steam Workshop. It is just called Fructose Industries um, Amphibious Rescue Vehicle. So if you just search Fructose Industries or Amphibious Rescue Vehicle on the Steam Workshop, it should come up for you. So if you want to test it out, it is on there, and you can go ahead and test it out. Leave me any comments if you have any suggestions for it or, you know, ideas for things that could be added to it. So that's pretty much it for this. So if you guys enjoyed it or you liked the vehicle, please leave a thumbs up on the video. It helps me out a ton. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and as always guys, thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful adventure, and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys!